Hey friends, I want you to be free from anxiety. I've gone through it. I've had panic attacks, all that stuff. There are some scriptures that have really, really helped me. So I've done a series, actually a, like a channel on um, scriptures and what they mean and how those scriptures can help you overcome anxiety, set you free and bring you inner peace. Okay, so right now we're talking about Joshua 1 9. If you like this video, check out the other videos on overcoming anxiety and please hit the subscribe button. Warrior Joshua 1 9. Stay tuned. Joshua 1 9 is a very powerful scripture to give you courage to help you overcome anxiety. We're going to talk about that and also what it means. Okay, so let's go back into the Old Testament. We're on the edge of the promised land. So that's what's happening. Moses has died. You know, set my people free, let my people go. Moses has died. He does not enter the promised land for various reasons. And you can read about that uh, in the Old Testament. So Joshua is getting ready to take his place. He's going to lead the Israelites into the promised land that God swore he would give them. And so God has a few things to say to Joshua before he leads the people into the promised land. Uh, verse 1, 3, he says, I'm going to give you every place you set your foot. Verse 1, 5, he says, nobody's going to be able to stand against you all the days of your life. And verse 1, 6, he says, be strong, be courageous, because you're going to lead these people into this land that I swore to their ancestors. Okay, God is going to perform mighty miracles through his servant Joshua. But there's a catch, you guys. In verses 7 and 8, he says, be strong, be very courageous. He says, obey all I have commanded you to do. He says, meditate on my word, keep my words on the edge of your lips. I'm paraphrasing, but he's basically saying, obey me, walk with me, be very careful to uh, read my word, meditate on it, do as I've commanded you, he says, and then you're going to be successful all the days of your life then you will be prosperous and successful. So then, you guys, then is a very powerful word here because these are the words that lead up to the famous verse, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not fear, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you all the days of your life. So throughout the entire Bible, there is a balance between God's holiness and God's graciousness. He longs to bless us. He longs to bring us peace and all those sorts of things. What he's asking is for us to obey his commands and then he will bring us that inner peace that we so desire. You know, for the longest time, I was living in my sin. I was living in my addiction. I've been 15 years sober. I was an alcoholic. So I wanted peace, but I had all this anxiety, all this turmoil, but I wasn't living the way that I should have been living. You know, now I've, I've turned to the Lord. I'm not perfect. I mess up all the time, you know, but I try to follow God in whatever I do. And it's been a long journey to be free from the anxiety, right? It didn't happen overnight, but God has been true to his promise. And if it was true for Joshua, it is still true for us today, you guys. See, when we obey the Lord, he promises to be with us and that life's still going to be challenging, right? Joshua had a lot of challenges. Joshua was like a like a modern day Navy SEAL or Green Beret. I mean, he's a crazy, he was a crazy warrior, an amazing warrior. So he had a lot of scary things, a lot of challenges, but he had supernatural strength. So in the midst of our human weakness, when we give it over to God and obey his commands, we're going to have a strength that comes from the Lord. That's what's so amazing about God's power because it's the actual power of God to heal, to transform, and he promises to do that and to be with us forever. And the reason it's true for us today, you guys, is because the entire story of Joshua, it's, it's prophetic because it's pointing towards the eternal promised land that we're going to inherit through Jesus Christ. See, Christ fulfilled all the Old Testament laws when he came and died on the cross for us. He became that sacrifice. So, so we did away with the sacrificing of animals because Jesus was the sacrifice. So he didn't abolish it, he fulfilled it. He says, I, I told you, I didn't come to abolish the law or the prophets, I came to fulfill. And he did fulfill to the very letter. And Jesus promises that he fulfilled that, that he's come to rescue, to save us, that he will be with us forever. Because of his great sacrifice, how much more then should we obey Christ? He says that when we follow him and 
obey him, we will have a peace that passes all understanding, a peace that does not come from the world, that comes from the Holy Spirit living within us. Furthermore, he says, I have defeated death. Who else has defeated death? Nobody. Nobody but Christ has defeated death and is offering you eternal life. Who are you going to put your faith in? Come on, really. And he tells us, I'll be with you forever. I mean, I don't know why people don't want that. I just, I don't get it. It's, it's confusing to me, but Romans 8:38, he, he says, I'm sure that neither death, life, angels, demons, nor present, nor future, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life. Then Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he says, all authority has been given me, everything. I have all authority, is what he says. He says, therefore, go make disciples, telling everybody what I've done, baptizing them in the, Father, in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. And then he says, lo, I am with you. I'm with you always, always, even until the end of the age. You guys, that's an amazing promise. So let me sum it up with my favorite verse that I think pretty much speaks to everything I just said. He says, in this life, you will have trouble, but take heart for I have overcome the world. How did Jesus overcome the world? Because he fulfilled the promise. He fulfilled that Old Testament sacrifice. He died on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins to do away with the animal sacrifices and all those sorts of things. And then he rose from the dead. So he's still alive with us today. So that is how he defeated death. That is how he defeated Satan, which is the prince of the air today. So it's, it's pretty amazing. So this story, um, Joshua's story is an example of great victory over trials by drawing on the strength of God, by drawing on His strength. See, God is all powerful, but He does require us to do some things, to step out in faith, to obey His commands, and then He promises He's going to be with us even until the end of the age, you guys. So, what is God calling you to do that is going to require you to step out in faith even though you're fearful? I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below and check out some of the other videos um, on scriptures and how they can help you overcome anxiety and actually what they mean like this one and how you can actually apply them to your life, right? It's nice when people throw scriptures at you, but it's nice to know how you can apply them and what they mean. So check out some of the other videos, hit the subscribe button, and I'd love to connect with you too, genuinelifeblog.com for more stuff. You can also email me. Um, it's, uh, what is my email? It's connectwithjodystevens at yahoo.com. And I love to chat with you about uh, anxiety and <laughs> overcoming it and stuff like that. So thanks for watching and God bless you.